you think America should be stepping in because ASEAN may need some help from I, I more think, multilateral? I think right now I don't see a role for mm. us saving to encourage mm. everyone to solve their differences through dialogue. Mm -hmm. I, I think that's right now the most helpful we can be. But I think it's very important that, that Thailand and Cambodia find a way to talk about this. And it's not easy. I think border issues are always complicated in every country, uh -huh. but it's, it's all the more important. This is a border. These are two nations that mm -hmm. trade together, that are ASEAN countries together, and, and hopefully they can find a way mm -hmm. so that citizens aren't killed or dislocated. With the expansion of ASEAN in terms of cooperation with America, mm -hmm. with the U.S., in what way do you think the U.S. can have more closer relations to ASEAN? Well, one of the things we've been looking at is very practically. How can we engage with ASEAN countries on things that matter to all of us? Disaster assistance, disaster planning, mm -hmm. disaster preparation, uh, health sharing, you know, getting all of our experts together to talk about vaccines and health care, or simple things like water management. They're, in fact, I think coming right up as a group of officials from across ASEAN mm -hmm. who are concerned with the Mekong River they're going to the United States to talk to Mississippi River people, again, just sharing ideas across all of our countries, which I think, and, and as ASEAN moves to be a more common community in a few mm -hmm. years, that's going to be a very powerful economic force too. Yes. It's exciting. On the other hand, ASEAN is also working with other East Asia countries like China, Absolutely. Japan, especially China, and they have developed good relations with Thai business people. Mm -hmm. So in what way the U.S. can be balancing of power, or do you think you are in competition with no, China? No, I, I don't. In fact, if you've actually recently heard Secretary Clinton talk about, it is a, it's a healthy economic competition, and we should all be in that. Mm -hmm. There are many countries in the world who are competing in today's economy, and that's good for all of us. You know, China's economy has raised everyone's level, uh -huh. and, and China's an important friend to us too. As you know, we talk very regularly with Chinese. The Chinese president was just in the United States in late January. And, so, and it's important. But I think if I were Thailand, just like America, you mm -hmm. want lots of friends. Yes. In today's world, no nation can go it alone. Mm -hmm. You and I were talking about the environment this morning. Yeah. That doesn't stop at a border. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, for Thailand, for America, you want to have good relations with as many countries as possible. Mm -hmm. Good trading relations, good relations on research, good human relations. And for the United States, I think we think that's terrific. So for the U.S., China can be both friends and competitor. Exactly, a competitor, but a very healthy competition. A, a healthy competition is good for all of us. Uh -huh. Makes everyone try a little harder. We have such an improved relationship with China now. The real ability to talk about issues very candidly. We don't always agree on human rights, for example. Mm -hmm. We've encouraged more transparency in some of their dealings. But we are able to talk about them. We have a very good strategic dialogue. Mm -hmm. And I think that's healthy for everybody. The U.S. has just appointed special envoy, a special to, Burma. envoy to Burma. Does it mean softening stance of the U.S. to Burma? No, I don't Burma? think it's softening. I think what we're doing, we don't think that Burma has, has made enough positive change. And I was just over on the border a couple of weeks ago, visited a refugee camp. You know, 60,000 Burmese refugees who want to go home. Mm -hmm. But they can't now. The time is not right. The conditions are not safe. There's no dialogue. You and I are talking here about the political dialogue. Mm -hmm. There isn't a political dialogue in Burma. There aren't different political parties offering candidates and views. And I think until Burma opens up more, it will be hard, of course, mm -hmm. for the people here and elsewhere to go back home. But we're hoping having a special envoy will give us more ways to talk to Burma. More ways to talk to neighboring countries, as you know, Thailand and the United mm -hmm. States and all of the ASEAN countries mm -hmm. share a great dialogue on how we can best promote a change in Burma. Uh -huh. And our special envoy, I think, will play a very important role. Uh, right now, at the moment, the U.S. should maintain sanctions. For the moment, policy. we don't see a change in that. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we are always talking to Thailand, to ASEAN, to the Japanese, to China, to the EU about how we can best make a good change in Burma, how we can help Burma go where they need to go. You have plenty of experiences in the Philippines. Mm -hmm. You were posted there more than three years. What do you think can be applied to Thailand, to Thai society? You know, one of the things I learned in the Philippines is what we've just been talking about. The real importance of this whole region and of ASEAN as a group of nations. Mm -hmm. And I really learned from my time there how the ASEAN nations have these regular meetings, they talk about issues, 
And I think for me, that was a really important lesson I brought here. That of course my focus is Thailand, mm -hmm. but the importance of Thailand as the region around it and the importance of the ASEAN region. And so I hope I'll be able to use some of that experience here mm -hmm. to talk to Thailand, not just about Thai American issues, but about the many other issues that we all care about. Will you bring your experience of papaya dancing from oh, Philippines? I heard know, that if I so had known, everybody around the world would see that. It's so popular in YouTube. I know how embarrassing. I'm not a very good really? dancer. But I was on a t actually, it was a very serious interview. I did an interview about international affairs. And at the very end of the interview, they said, would you stay and do something lighter after the commercial break? And that uh -huh. turned out to be learning a dance. <laughs> so I did. So, so of course, everyone sees the dance. No one sees the serious interview I did for her. There must be lots of women who inspire to be diplomats. Mm -hmm. What can be your tips for those women? Well, you know, I do hear from them on Twitter, through Facebook. And my tip to everyone is pick a job you love. Whether you want to be a teacher, whether you want to be in media, whether you want to be a diplomat, and whether you're a man or woman, if you do work you love, you'll be good at it. Mm -hmm. And you will enjoy your life. So if you love your job, you're happy with what you're doing, you'll probably be very successful and good. But don't pick a job just because it sounds good. Being a diplomat sounds glamorous, yes. but I work very hard. And if you spend mm -hmm. an entire day in a refugee camp, it's, it's very inspiring, but it is hot, it is dirty, it is a very long day. You leave mm -hmm. before five in the morning. You know, it's not all easy and glamorous. It's, it's mm -hmm. important and hard work. To be far away from your husband, from your family, it, must be It is. That's part the of hardest part about difficult. my job. I enjoy so much the chance to work with other countries, chance to represent my country, the chance to do some good. Mm -hmm. But being this far, my mother's 87. It's a long ways away from home. Mm -hmm. My husband is a diplomat too, but he's assigned in Washington, D.C. So it's very hard. It's, it's the hard part of the job. But how do you manage as a woman living alone somewhere else and your husband is somewhere else? Well, in today's world, we can communicate through our cell phones, our Blackberries, our mm. computers. We can talk most of the time. So that's mm. terrific. And of course, I have a lot of friends here. Thailand is a friendly place, so I don't mm. feel alone at all. Uh -huh. Lots of people who are... And you have two cats as your children. I have two cats. Junior. Junior and Emily. Uh -huh. And they're here. I asked them if they'd like to come to Thailand or stay in Washington. You have to ask them. They voted for Thailand. And okay, they they're vote. very happy here. They love it. They're getting a little bit fat, uh -huh. but they like it very much. How do they vote for you? How do they know? Oh well, I'll just say, where would you guys like to go? Uh huh. And they raise their paw. <laughs> no, they're very happy here. For the next three years that you will be posted in Thailand, mm -hmm. what do you think would be your achievement or your main aim to work in Thailand? You know, I have two issues about which I'm very passionate. One is education. My mother was a school teacher. My grandmother was a school teacher. So I want to find ways to continue to link up our education. Thailand has a very strong education system. So does the United States. We have a lot of students, Thai students, studying in the U.S. We also have Americans studying here. Keep looking for ways to build that connection. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is health. I want to keep building on the health research we do. These are very practical things, but they matter to all of us. Mm -hmm. Whether you're Thai, you're American, you're an ASEAN citizen somewhere else, you know, good education and good health mean mm -hmm. a good life. I see. So I'm very, those are the issues I'm most passionate about. Uh -huh. With the recent case of Victor Booth's extradition mm -hmm. to the U.S., does the U.S. have to explain for Thailand to Russia because Thailand was caught in the middle, oh, we well, were in a hot seat? Thai, I, I, that was before I came here, of course, but I certainly read about that. And, you know, law enforcement cases like that are complicated. Legal mm -hmm. issues are always complicated, and we very much respected Thai's legal process. Mm -hmm. Thailand had to do its own legal work there. And, you know, in every case like that where we're cooperating on legal issues, it's important that we respect the laws of each other's countries. And, you know, in the international world, we all do have to work together mm -hmm. on some of these issues. And they're complicated, they can be controversial, mm -hmm. but I think what's really important is that we do work together. I that see. we also know that crime doesn't stop at any one person's border mm -hmm. and that you work through these issues together. Does the Thai politics make you worried with your job in Thailand? Thai politics, I think Secretary Clinton described Thai politics as spicy. Yes, Thai politics, that's the word. Well, Thai politics are, you know, energetic, a lot of different and points of And you agree with her? 
I think it's very spicy. You certainly see a lot of different views and opinions. No, that's the same in the United States. Mm -hmm. We're very used to hearing strong political opinions and views. Uh -huh. And, you know, again, I think the Thai people need to figure out which direction, how they intend to vote, you know, what kind of government will be formed. And, mm -hmm. you know, our intention is we will be with the Thai people, we will be friends to Thailand, but the decisions you all make on your politics are yours. Yeah. I don't vote in Thailand. ความคิดเห็นตรงกับรัฐมนตรีต่างประเทศของสหรัฐนะคะคุณฮิลลารีคลินตันค่ะสำหรับท่านเอกอัครราชทูตสหรัฐประจำประเทศไทยอธิบายสั้นๆนะคะว่าการเมืองไทยรสชาติเผ็ดจัดจ้านแต่ก็บอกว่าไม่ต่างกับสหรัฐนะคะซึ่งซึ่งแสดงถึงความหลากหลายและเป็นเรื่องที่ดีสำหรับระบอบประชาธิปไตยค่ะและทั้งหมดคือตอบโจทย์ข่าวสำหรับคืนนี้ค่ะขอบพระคุณทุกท่านที่ติดตามชมอิชานัทธาโกโมลวาทินและทีมงานสวัสดีค่ะ